This Western Conference Play-In Tournament Betting Picks and Series Betting Picks edition of the NBA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, MMA, NHL, golf, and more. Sign up today using our promo code NBASGPN to get a 100 deposit percent match. We're also brought to you by the NFL Draft and the Old Fashioned Football Podcast. They're giving away some autographed NFL merch to celebrate. Head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash OFF contest. Again, that's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash OFF contest to enter today. Welcome, everyone, to the NBA Gambling Podcast, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It is Monday, April the 15th, significant to Americans for tax day. But hey, we're on to the NBA playoffs. The play in tournaments start on Tuesday. I thought we'd get ahead of the lines and also give you our series uh, predictions for the two confirmed series that we have in the Western Conference. And then we'll do the Eastern Conference tomorrow on Tuesday. We'll also give you our very, very early uh, finals predictions uh, from our host. But joining me here to help me break everything down here on this Monday episode and in the Western Conference, I got my guy here with me, Terrell Furman. Junior Terrell, what's going on, my man? How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm great. I'm ready. What? Ah, oh, it was a great end of the season, man. It was a great end of the season. I mean, shout out to the four, Charlotte, North Carolina. Shout out to the fours outright over the Cavs. The Cavs didn't even try in the second half. I mean, uh, Joel and B, the Sixers get yet another win with Joel and B in the lineup, 31 and 8 this season. 31 and 8 is what they were with Joel and B played in the game. 31 and 8. If you take that over a full season, like if you project that over a full season, that's a 65, 66 win, 64, 65 win uh, playoff team right there. And they're masked as a playing team. I mean, see, people talk about the NBA and I call it cover college, too. And they're like, hey, college basketball is great and the atmosphere is amazing and everything. Yes, but the NBA is juicy. When they get down to it, these storylines get juicy. Tell me why we're getting yet another Luca and Clippers series again. Luca Kawhi, Clippers yeah. guys, we get that again. Like, and I'm not tired of seeing it. I'm really not. I'm not tired of seeing it. It's good basketball every time. Yeah, that was the one series that we knew for sure uh before the season ended was happening between the Clippers and the They're Mavericks. intertwined. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just one of those. Yeah, it's turning into a rivalry. Yeah, like like it's it's like Miami and New York, like back in the early nineties when yep. they would just meet each other. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a really fun series to watch for sure. So, um, yeah, obviously with the regular season over now, what we'll do today is that since we have lines out for the play in tournament brackets, we're going to, uh, play in tournament games. I should say we will do Western conference here today. So, um, Lakers Pelicans, and then we'll talk about the warriors and the Kings, and then we'll play off. Uh, we'll, uh, preview the two series, between the Suns and the Timberwolves, and then the uh, Clippers and the Mavericks. But so before we get into it, I know we give out our early, very, 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 very early finals predictions at the beginning of the season. You and I do the sharp off. We'll revisit that as well uh, when we have some downtime. I'm, I'm pretty sure you crushed me on that this year. But oh no, um, no, no, no! I had a lot riding on the Warriors, sir. <laughs> oh. I had 
I had a lot riding on the Warriors, and the Warriors let me down. I mean, what did they even – I don't even know what they finished with. They finished with 46 wins. I, I believe it was 47 and a half. We'll have to go back and look. But I had Warriors everything, Warriors in the play-in tournament, where I just knew this was a Warriors bounce back year, and it was disappointing for majority of the year. Yeah, I, I know I had the Hawks, so I think I'm right there with you. So it might just come down to us on our, oh, uh, some of our other bets <laughs> uh, that we had. Um, but look, we're 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 here with with six confirmed teams, and then we're waiting for the final two teams. Obviously, with the uh, play in tournaments happening for both conferences, let's do our NBA Finals predictions here first before we get into the first two. Uh, we'll do the two the play in tournament, then we'll do the uh, series prediction. So. Why don't you lead us off here, Terrell? Who is going to be playing in the NBA Finals this year, and who is going to be hoisting the Larry O'Brien Trophy, if they still call it that? All right. I think this is tough. So I'm going to stick with the easy one, and that's the Eastern Conference. It's Philly. It is Philly, man. I am on the Philly train. And that's crazy to say, as you know, a, a guy that's a Giants fan, but I am all over Philly because they're so good with Joe and B. And yeah. the options that I have to pick from in the Eastern Conference, I can either choose Joe Missoula at the highest odds or the lowest odds, Joe Missoula. Doc Rivers with probably without Giannis for a game or two as well. So <laughs> Doc Rivers is two. Tom Thibodeau in the Knicks. As much as I'm a Knicks fan, it – if Julius Randle would have came back, I would have actually felt really, really good about the Knicks. But I, without Julius yeah. Randle, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's it's Tibbs, man. I, I don't like Tibbs. The Cavaliers, some young guys with the Orlando Magic, Miami, which actually isn't that bad of a bet, but I just don't want to take Miami to do it again. Yeah. And Rick Carlisle and, <laughs> like, it's not a good it's not good options. I don't think it's good options. So if you're telling me that Joel Embiid and Nick Nurse over all of those guys, yeah, I'll take my chances and I'll just pray that Joel Embiid stays healthy throughout the course of the playoffs. So I like uh, Philly to be able to get it done. Western Conference. I feel like all these teams can make it. I feel like every single one of these teams can make it. You could make a case for, I mean, we could sit here for like four or five hours and just go through every single team. Yes, uh, I think every single Western team conference. in the West can make it. I yeah. think, I literally think every single team, except New Orleans. New Orleans actually is pretty freaking bad. Um, but everybody else, I think, is, has a chance. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to stick with Denver. I'm going to just, just stick with Denver. They've shown me they done they can do it before, and I think they actually have a pretty easy path because they're probably going to draw the Lakers in the first round, and that's going to be a pretty easy win for them. Um, I'm gonna just go Denver. So give me Philly and Denver, and Philly gets it done in the Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic, Jokic finals finals rivalry game. Yeah, Embiid gets it done. He gets one right after Jokic. Yeah, I, again, I think that everybody wants to pick the Boston train because, again, how dominant they were in the regular season, right? They're a great regular season team, and I think over the past couple of years with the Boston Celtics team, it's definitely the most talented, right? They have they have the depth, but the one concern I have is what you mentioned, the coaching. It's Joe Mazzulla. Mm -hmm. Like, do I trust him down the stretch to make the adjustments and, you know, draw up the proper plays for this Boston Celtics team um, and not get out coached? Because if they match up with the Miami Heat again, I don't think anybody would be shocked if the Miami Heat beat them um, this season again. I think you can make the same case with Philly. I'm trying not to be saying. Bro, I'm boring. telling you, they better hope that Philly does not drop that game to the Heat. If, I don't, if yeah. Philly drops that game to the Heat, I am I am 100% all over Philly money line in the first series. I think they can knock off Boston. I think there's two teams that can reasonably beat Boston, like reasonably. I think they'll fold against anybody else because mm -hmm. they just don't get it. But reasonably, I think that Philly and the Knicks can beat them in a game. And in the series, just because of the coaching yeah. you know, on Boston's side, I truly believe that Joe Mazzulla can blow a series to those two. But I'm I'm just – I'm not I'm – not, I don't see it, man. It's a lot of people that's really pushing the Boston narrative. I don't see it. Like, I really think that this is just a team that's going to squander somewhere. Yeah, I think that they – so – 
I honestly think they end up playing Miami in the first round. And again, Miami, I don't think they're scared of anybody. Uh, I mean, we've seen that over the past several seasons where they made it to the finals in the bubble. They made it last year. So this team, they again, we talk about flipping a switch. The Chiefs are that team. The mm-hmm. Miami Heat are that team as well uh, in the NBA. So I, I'm with you on feeling me. I hate giving the same pick out, but it just makes too much sense with the healthy Joel Embiid and the acquisition that they did make at the NBA trade deadline with uh, Buddy Heal. Buddy Heal, yeah, him. more shooting. Yo, right. right. Buddy Kelly, Hill. if he gets hot. That's another option coming off of the bench. You picked up Kyle Lowry. Okay, he's good for 15, 20 minutes coming off the bench. I know he's getting... And he's going to give you one like. game. He's going to give yeah. you one game, just like he did when he was in Miami against exactly. Boston. He hit all those threes. He's going to give you one big game where, you know, Kyle Lowry really does it for you in the playoffs. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I think, think the they, one I think they really solid. The one key player that has to be consistent is going to have to be Tobias Harris. I think... We know Joel mm-hmm. Embiid's going to get his. We know Maxi's going to do Maxi things. It's that what do you get out of Tobias Harris for this Philly team? Uh, so yeah, long story short, Easter Conference. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, I just need to see that out of Boston um, before I can pick them. Um, I mean, they're a great, talented team. They have the talent, but this is their year in a, in a weaker Eastern Conference. Especially, we don't know what the status of uh, Giannis is going to be going forward. But yeah, Philly for me. For the West, I mean, you mentioned it, right? You can make a case for every single team. Um, I have two teams. It's it's either the it's either the Mavericks. I was so close to saying Mavericks. It's either the Mavericks. So yeah, I was so close to saying Mavericks. And I, I want to get there with Phoenix, man. I want to. But that no, no, they really keep losing. They me. keep losing the teams when their stars get hurt. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That was my thing. That yeah. the loss to the the loss to the Clippers really just gave out any hope that I thought that Phoenix was going to go on a run. Yeah. Like it really did. So I'll go with Dallas. I like the maids that we talked about at volumes during the trade deadline. Um, you know, they picked up PJ Washington, the annual da- uh, Daniel Gafford. That Gafford pickup now looks really huge with Derek Lively missing significant time. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's done for the rest of the year and the playoffs as well. So. Um. Yeah, so I'm gonna go Dallas and I'm gonna go Philly. Uh, for the NBA Finals here. So can I can I add a long shot? Can I add a long shot real quick? Hey man, we talk about the playing team that goes on the run and makes. I know that I've been on Golden. I told you I was on Golden State earlier in the season, but they look yeah. really good now. They look really good now. If Golden State goes on a run and they end up the eight seed, I mean Denver is just gonna be a hard, you know, a hard. Thing to climb but if they get past denver like if that happens if the unimaginable happens and they beat denver yeah i mean why would you not think they're going to beat everybody else what's, so what's the the winner else? of lakers and pelicans would get denver right because denver is a two seed no so they get okc i forgot okc finishes okay the one. so the you one already yeah. so you yeah. already get okc a young team that you're like oh I don't. That just made me like the Warriors even more. I forgot that Denver's not even the one. Yeah, yeah. They, they make it seem like <laughs> freaking. Yeah, yeah, man. Give me, give me the Warriors at forty five to one to win the West. That's a really I mean, for juicy a team price. that's done it before. That's a really juicy price, bro. And you're telling me they got to go through OKC and the Thunder. What's the? How did the? How did the order stack out? So it's. So they go up against OKC. Say they beat OKC, then they have to go play the, the winner, winner of Clap, uh, Clippers and Mavs four or five one eight four five. Hey man, I think Mavericks. Well, we'll talk about it. I'll just bury the lead real quick. I think it's yeah. Mavericks. The yeah. Warriors defense. The Warriors defense is good enough to hold them in check. I think that's a really good series. It goes back and forth, but the Warriors could possibly get that done. Now look at that. You have a forty-five to one in the Western Conference Finals. All right. Uh, all right. So there are our finals predictions here before uh, we actually get into the two play in tournament games here. Uh, and then we'll uh, preview the series um, like we talked about. Uh, let me tell everyone about, hey, NFL, it's a, it's 365 days a year. We know that. Um, and old fashioned football with Jay Mark and uh, his better half. She's a star of the show. We know it. The NFL mm-hmm. draft just around the corner and old fashioned football is giving away some autographed merch. To celebrate uh, JSN, Travis Etienne, J.K. Dobbins, Frank Gore, and many more. Old-fashioned football, 
Come for the football, stay for the whiskey. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash OFF contest to enter to win some of that autograph merch. And we're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. You can play their pick em game, pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's games for a chance to win big. You can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick em entry. You can, make, uh, can also make rival picks, which pits two players against each other. It's the playoffs. Nothing is changing. We're still going to put together our underdog fantasy entries uh, for the games every single day. So stay tuned. Terrell and I will put together our underdog fantasy entry for the two play in tournament games happening on Tuesday. Sign up today. We're using our promo code NBA SGPN and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick'em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com and find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with our promo code NBA SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick'em special. Must be 18 years or older and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerning with the play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit, or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right, Terrell, let's hey, get Nick, in. Nick made a good point real quick in chat. Yeah, OKC 3-1 and one versus Golden State this season, but two of them were overtime games and all games were decided by less than four points. Hey, man. Hey, man. That means... They're there. They're right there, neck and neck. It's not going to be like, you know, most one eights are like, you know, a team that probably shouldn't have made the playoffs and a team that we know is probably going to be really, really good. Mm-hmm. This, this, this looks a little bit even. It, it reminds me of last year. Bucks Heat, it does. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it for sure. Um, hopefully they get there. Yeah, yeah, hopefully they get there. They got two games to win. Yep. Uh, all right, Terrell, let's start here with the play in tournament games happening on Tuesday. We've got the LA Lakers. They are in New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. Currently, as it stands, the Pelicans are a one point favorite with a total of 225 in this game. Uh, injury reports are pretty clean. Everybody's a healthy, they're going to be a go for the Lakers. I know they're missing a couple guys with Jared Vanderbilt and Christian Wood. The Pelicans did see the return of uh, Brandon Ingram on Sunday, so he's going to be back for this team here as well. Now, these two teams played each other on the final day of the regular season, and the um, Lakers absolutely blew them out of the water. They got the victory. Let's see. Let me find the final score here. 124 to 108, I believe, was the final score in that game. Lakers had dropped 70 points in the first half and then pretty much cruised uh, in the second half there. So the winner of this matchup then goes on to play the defending champions, the Denver Nuggets. One is the number here in favor of the Pelicans, Terrell. Now, there's a lot of conversation happening or people mm-hmm. saying that should the Lakers quote unquote, <laughs> drop the game to avoid game Denver to avoid Denver, drop who, the game to avoid Denver. <laughs> who swept them last year. We, we should point that out as well. I think it's a bad matchup for the Lakers, but let's talk about this game first. Pelicans minus one. I mean, well, first I'll answer the narrative question. I don't think good teams take, well, quarter playoff teams take in the NBA. Like, I, I really don't think they do, because if they do, a lot of other teams would have lost. The Knicks would have lost and tried to play the Pacers instead of playing one of Joel Embiid and the Sixers or the Miami Heat, Jim Butler and Miami Heat. Like, the Knicks would have been like, oh, yeah, let's just drop this game to Chicago right here. So that way we get slotted in and play the six seed with the, you know, like, I just feel like all these teams just don't care about those narratives of trying to duck smoke or trying to play other teams or anything like that. Like, uh, who was it? It was, it's a whole bunch of things that I feel like, yeah, I just don't think teams are doing that. So I think the Lakers stupidly enough actually win this game and go on to play Denver Nuggets. I can't trust this New Orleans team. And, it, and maybe this is the kiss of death for the Lakers because I've been horrible betting New Orleans all year. But I just can't trust this, trust this team. They didn't show up at all, at all, in a game that would have secured you're not even in this situation. If you win that game at home, you're not even in this situation. You're sliding as the sixth seed and you're in the playoffs. I, I mean, I, I don't I don't know. It just – I don't think they're locked in. And I can't trust this New Orleans team, man. 
I, I'm really good. It feels really chalk because I think a lot of the public is on the Lakers too, but I really just think the Lakers are the better team. They don't have an answer for Anthony Davis. Jonas Valachunas was virtually unplayable yesterday because either they pulled him outside of the paint with Anthony J Davis at the free throw line, and they they really challenged him and went at him defensively. Like <laughs> he yeah. he didn't have he couldn't do anything, and they ended up not. I don't even know what his final minutes count was, but at one point I was like, I think he's played like three minutes the entire game. So yeah. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going with the Lakers plus one. Yeah, I mean, just doesn't make sense on why the books would put this at minus one when the Lakers. I know again, it, it's it's a, it's a different he seven game. Minutes. Yeah, and Valanciunas only played seven minutes. Yeah, <laughs> so they, they pretty minutes. much played him off the floor. So um, now it's Larry Nance. Yeah, it's Larry Nance. Yeah. Now you have to trust Larry Nance all the minutes. Like, yeah, I don't know, bro. I'm going to go with the Lakers here as well. I mean, you're, you're not guaranteeing yourself. Like, we're, I know we'll talk about the second game here in a second. Um, but you win this game, you guarantee yourself at least getting into the playoffs and you have to play the Denver Nuggets. At that point, you lose this game, then you go up against the Warriors. Um, I mean, are you guaranteed to win that game against the Warriors? Then you're no. probably going to be going home at that point. So, no, you're. You're shitting yourself. If Lakers lose yeah. this game, I think I'm shitting myself. Yeah, I would be too. So I'll take the Lakers here plus the one here with you. Uh, total in this game is sitting at 225 here. Terrell, any thoughts on the total? <sighs> I kind of want to go under. Okay. It's just that the Lakers are – Lakers score, man. Lakers can score, but do they put together that? I, I'm going to respect the deja vu game in that aspect. Maybe not on the side, but I'll respect it on the total, and I'll go under. New Orleans plays a little bit better defensively than they did this last game. Lakers played really well defensively, and New Orleans was just really just not. They were just not locked in. Like a lot of those shots were just they were good shots. They just weren't going in. So I think that while the ball does find the rim a little bit better for New Orleans. Defense is better for both of these two teams, and it's a low-scoring game. Playoff intensity, I'll take under 225. Yeah, I think maybe like they come out of the gates, you know, the offense looks really good, and the, the screws really tighten up in the second half, and the game slows down a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I would take full game under here as well. Again, it's 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 going to be a playoff atmosphere. Obviously, it, it is pretty much it is a playoff game essentially. When and you're in, you're going to you know quote unquote the big dance here. Um, but again, like you mentioned, I think defensively, where the Pelicans season long have been pretty good, they had tailed off a little bit over the last five games. Uh, but I'm not sure how much we could really take away over the last five games because again, people are just trying to get to the finish line and um, you know get the season over with or, or whatever the case might be right now. So the Pelicans number fourteen as far as defense over the last five games season long top six they're a top 10 defense this season for the pelicans and again i've talked about a lot that they have the length um to really bother other teams when it comes to the defensive side of the basketball so it's gonna be interesting to see how they try to slow down anthony davis in this game you know you mentioned Jonas valentine who only played seven minutes or so you're expecting larry nance or Trey Murphy or uh -huh. somebody else to try to slow him down. So I think the key for the Lakers in this game will be Anthony Davis. But yeah, under for me here as well. Player props and what are we looking at, Terrell? Anything you like? Huh. I mean, AD really should feast on the board. Maybe it's, I don't know, he didn't hit that prop yesterday. That would have been the thing to think that AD should feast on the boards again. He didn't hit that prop yesterday, though. What did he finish with 10? Uh, yesterday, he finished with 11 rebounds, but he 11. also only played 33 minutes. Mm, yeah. Right now, that number's at 13 and a half for his rebounds, though. I don't think they're going to blow him out again. I just think they're going to win the game. I think New Orleans is going to fold. Let's go with 80 rebounds, Kenny. All right. Um, yeah, let's, let's run that. I'm going to say 13 and a half now. Oh, wait. Mm. I'm yeah, not there yet. Percent. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Let's. Um, I like probably LeBron play. Yeah, I was going to mention we'll assist or rebounds uh, for Braun. Casey said it in the chat. I like I like the assist play. 
plus 135, he says. Yeah, uh, Kaysen's are right there with me. LeBron, PA, over 16 and a half. I think I like D-Lo, too. D-Lo's going to be the one key for them. He's got to have a good playoffs, man. For Yeah, for the playoffs. Yeah, he's got to have a good playoffs. I think uh, LeBron. D-Lo threes. It's been a pretty good prop over the course of the season. LeBron had Last a triple-double yesterday, 28, 11, and 17. Back in February, 21 points, 4 rebounds, and 14 assists. Um, and he's had at least eight assists in three, uh, four straight games against the Pelicans head to head. And yeah, I like it. I'm I, I'm tempted to do the Zion under man on his points. Yeah, did you see him yesterday? He looked terrible. I, I, I didn't watch the game yesterday. He he looked terrible. I think he started one for six. He ended up four for 13, 12 points. Like, but like, it was like every shot was contested. Anthony Davis was contesting every shot and he just never got comfortable. Like at all. It, yeah. it just didn't, it didn't look like he was getting into the groove of things. And it's probably a good portion of the reason why they lost. If you want to be honest. Four of 13 yesterday for him. He only had 12 points. Did have eight rebounds and eight assists though. So. You want to go PA or sorry RA again for him? I don't. I couldn't talk you off. It's at twelve and a half. I am going to play. What I'm going to play. One of Larry Nance or Trey Murphy. Uh, like Trey yeah. Murphy threes. Y yeah. Well, I'm probably going to play Trey Murphy anyways, but I'm probably going to play Larry Nance because how do you not start him? And I think that's why, you know, Valentina's nines aren't out. How do you not start him? Yeah. They straight up. You, Valentina's had three fouls in those seven minutes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know he had three fouls in those seven minutes, by the way. <laughs> Yo, how do you play him? But it's also, I mean, Larry and Larry Nance, you know, I, I'm going to end up playing. If they drop a line on Larry Nance, I'm probably going to play the over because he's going to get 30 minutes. He's going to get 30 plus minutes. Then you just take Valanciunas unders. Yeah, if they dare post it, I don't think they're going to post it after. I really don't think they're going to post it after yesterday. It was bad. It was bad. That might be the worst game of his career. He might be thinking that was the worst game of my career. Seven minutes, two points, three rebounds, four turnovers, three fouls. <laughs> Yo, he really, like, if, if we go through the numbers, that actually might be the worst game of his career. Like, for real. Ah, I would not be surprised. Yeah, man. Uh, anything I'm, else? I, I'm, I'm fading. If they dare hang a Valachunas number there at any point over the next... 24 hours, I will uh, completely get down on and under, but I don't think they're going to do it. I think they know that this is, he's he's not playing much. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that and see if uh, they, uh, it probably won't come out till tomorrow, but right now they don't have it posted. All right. I'm good. Yeah, anything else? All right. All right, so that's Lakers. Did I say Trey Murphy? I feel like, yeah, you I said Trey Murphy. Murphy. Hey. Real quick, or her gotta jump. get a parlay in. It's the playoffs. I don't care what people say. Playing game, playing game. This is playoff basketball. I don't care. Let's get a little same game threes parlay. Oh, they don't have Trey. Mur All right, never mind. We're not going to do that yet. They don't have Trey Murphy listed yet. But Trey Murphy, D'Lo, four plus threes each. Probably play. Play. It probably pays pretty good. More than likely. All right. Second game of the night, we've got the Golden State Warriors. They are going to be in Sacramento to take on the Kings. Currently, as it stands, the Warriors are a two-and-a-half-point road favorite here with a total of 224-and-a-half. Uh, looking at the injury report, pretty clean for both teams. Obviously, for the Kings, we know 
no Malik Monk, and no Kevin Herter. Um, but for the Warriors, I mean, everybody's going to be a go in this game. Two and a half right now for the Warriors on the road here, Terrell. I mean, we already know where we're thinking here, but can the Kings cover this number, or do you think it's a blowout? Yeah, I think the, I think the Warriors got it. I'm not I'm I'm not confident enough that it's gonna be anything because the Kings are gonna try to extend the game, fouls, all that. I'm yeah, I'm fairly confident in the two and a half here and for the Warriors. I and I'm just I'm over this Kings team. I've been over them for a little while actually, and it just feels like they're like the Cavaliers of the West. Like <laughs> I I, I kind of don't trust you. I really actually just. I don't know if you're going to play a complete game. I don't know if you're going to stay into it in the fourth quarter. Like, you lose games, you shouldn't. You sometimes win games, you should, you shouldn't. But you, it definitely feels like I've gotten more of a loss there. Uh, coming into this, they lost three of five to even be in this situation. Because, honestly, the Kings were cemented into the playoffs. Yeah. If we remember that. They were mm-hmm. cemented into the playoffs. And they played themselves out and put themselves into this situation as a nine. I, I just rather trust the team that has been playing good basketball and winning games up to this point rather than the team that's been playing losing basketball, losing games. And this is where they got the Warriors for the last five. They've been hot for a while and they played themselves into the play in. They played themselves to make sure they kept that play in spot over the Rockets when the Rockets were trying to make the push. I, I think the Warriors are playing better basketball right now, and I'm sticking with the Warriors. The Warriors playing two and a half. <laughs> It's uh, really interesting that the four matchups this season between these two teams, the last three games were all decided by one point. Um, wow. Yeah, November 1st, 102-101 victory for the Warriors. And then the last two games, the Kings have won by one point, 124-123, and then 134-133. I think, the again, the, the difference in this game is just those two injuries that are really concerning for the Kings, not having... Malik Monk coming off of that bench, providing that offensive mm-hmm. spark when De'Aaron Fox goes to the bench. And then you're relying on guys like Davion Mitchell coming off of the bench, um, you know, to provide that spark for you. And then also using the you're losing that shooting ability of yeah. Kevin Herter, you know, who can knock down those threes coming off of the screens or in, in the open role as well. And that really again takes a lot from having to put it that puts a lot of pressure, I should say, on De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis to do the shooting here. Um, and then again, for this, like you mentioned, right? Defensively, the Suarez team has been better and they have guys that can, they have different guys that can throw at De'Aaron Fox, whether it is an Andrew Wiggins, whether it mm-hmm. is a Gary Payton, the second coming off of the bench for them. So I think that right now for this Warriors team is that they're healthier um, and they have that championship experience as well. And I think that for the Sacramento Kings, like the way they ended the season, like you mentioned, it, it, they're not playing their best basketball right now. And right now is where you want to be playing your best basketball. And I think that's where it's where the Sacramento Kings are heading the opposite direction. Now, the only I think advantage that they do have is that they are playing at home where again, that crowd is one of the best when they're playing uh-huh. great basketball. And we've seen that for the Kings, but I think this is a good spot here for the, for the golden state warriors. So I'm on the warriors here as well. Minus two and a half. We're going to play the money line as well. This number opened. It was at minus minus one twenty on the money line last night on DraftKings, but now it's all the way up to minus minus one forty. So money definitely uh, coming in on the golden state warriors in this game. Mm-hmm. Total's at two twenty four and a half here. Terrell, any thoughts on that? I am trying to figure out if I think the Kings are going to score. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to know pretty early. I think that's what's going to, I think that's, and it's probably more of a live bet situation in the first. I just feel like we're going to know pretty early. If this game starts slow, it's going slow all the way. If this game starts high paced and De'Aaron Fox is hitting his shots and Sabonis is, is making shots inside the paint. Like, I think that this is going to be a track meet and is, is going to go point for point the whole way through because Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox are probably playing 48 minutes. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't imagine them coming off the bench. I mean, going yeah. to the bench. I really can't imagine with no Malik Monk, Trey Lyles, Alex Lynn, and and Davion Mitchell is their bench right now. Not good. Yeah, I, I I can't imagine. I cannot imagine those two players coming off the floor. I really, really can't. And so, 
Uh, that's that's going to tell me if this is an over game. So I can only live bet the over. I'm not going to take the over right now. Right now, I feel better about the under. Last five games, Sacramento, 102.8 points per game. You have the Warriors at, at 110.4. Both been pretty good defenses. Sacramento, a top 10 defense over the course of the entire season. And Warriors have had picked it up really, really late and became a really, really good defense, being able to, once they got healthier, once uh, Steve Kerr kind of figured it out with that bunch. So I think this is going under. I think this is going to be one of those tightly contested, low scoring games. A lot of misses here, but. Uh, I'm not if it if it looks fast and I see that first quarter go over, I'm mm -hmm. I'm getting in on the over and I'm I'm playing the over at that point. It'll probably jump up to like 230 something. But I mean, look at the other matchups that we've seen. We've seen a hundred two hundred sixty plus points against these two teams before. So yeah. If I if I peep that it's going over, then I'm definitely getting in live on the over. But pregame, give me under. Yeah, I mean, you take a look at uh, some of the final scores. I mean, they did go 2-2. Two and two. They split on the total, but 236 in the first matchup, 203, and I think that was a game without Steph Curry for the Warriors. But then oh. after that, 247, 267 as well. So they have trended towards, obviously, the over uh, in these games. So, um, yeah, I'll lean towards the over. It just makes me nervous that Warriors, over the course of the final couple weeks, they were really slow coming out of the gate. Um, but again, if this is a game like you mentioned that they come out firing on all cylinders, this this game oh. could be over within like six minutes left in that fourth quarter. So I think it's a great call that you you know you would probably want to wait for a live number uh in this game. So yeah, I'll lean over here as well. But uh yeah, my more fair play will be on the Warriors as far as a side goes. Player props here, Terrell. What are you looking at? I mean, I talked about it. I don't think Darren Fox and Sabonis coming off the floor, man. Yeah, I really don't. They they talked about the minutes increase. We've seen, you know, looking at the past few games for De'Aaron Fox, well, the games that you know, quote unquote, mattered. <laughs> Your playing team, I think every game matters, but. 41, 41, 43, 44 in there. Like he's getting some pretty pretty high minute minutes into the 40s and that's been you know not regular for him like he's typically kind of uh 36 35 38 like yeah. he he doesn't it's not too too often you saw him into the season go into the 40 threshold he can do it especially when the game called for it but that's not how they played him they gave him his rest i think he's going to be well into the 40s this game same thing for Sabonis. Sabonis, I think he's going to be well into the 40s this game. He played, he does it a couple times, but it's not, it's not, you know, regular. But that Phoenix game, when they went to war with Phoenix and it was a one point game, that was 42 minutes from Sabonis. That just tells me, I think that this is, this is probably going to be a big Sabonis and Fox game just off of minutes usage alone. Yeah. I mean, I agree 100%. Um, you mentioned it, right? The lack of <clears throat> bench depth there. For the uh, Kings dealing with all the injuries that they do have, whether Trey Lyles has been, you know, in and out of the lineup, he had to deal with the illness. I do expect him to play, but the obviously significant injuries guys are for sure missing this game in Malik Monk and uh, Kevin Herter. So uh, do expect those guys to be out there minimum 42 to 43 minutes. Uh, their only rest is probably going to be at halftime. Um, yeah. You know, and obviously in timeouts as well. So, yeah, again, I don't see any... Go ahead. PRA, Sabonis PRA, 37 and a half. Just give That's me a number. If he's going to be on the floor, yeah, 37 and a half. That's his number. Wow. That's low, right? It feels, that feels it's super low, right? Yeah. I would have mentioned the triple been... double. I mean, if he gets a triple double, he's getting over that number. Yeah. 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 And it's just like they, you know, he has the size, he can get rebounds. We know he's playmaking with the assist. And then if he's like, if they, I mean, I know we're getting some bonus versus Draymond again, but if he's able to get the better Draymond and get and start scoring, yeah, I can see a 20. I can first of all, I think that 20 and 15 is very much a reasonable possibility for him. That's that's just yeah. points and rebounds. So I think this number is really, really short. Sabonis over 37 and a half, because I think he's gonna play 40 plus minutes. So if he's playing 40 plus minutes, I'm gonna take him to get over this number. Yeah, I, I I don't hate that call. Um, he's also been getting the assist in his career um, as a bonus against the Warriors. So 
Yeah, I definitely could get behind that. Fox, I mean, if you want to throw his points in there or his assist in there as he well. Played, he played 42 minutes in that Phoenix game. He finished with 25, 12, and 9. He played the next 40 was Orlando. Right he said he next play was Orlando in March 23rd, 40 minutes. He got 21, 14, and 8. Uh, the next one was overtime against Memphis. And he had 25, 18, and 5. The next one was 40 minutes against the Knicks. And he had 21, 14, and 2. So what? Did he not play 14? No, so he didn't make it that time. So that was 37. 40 minutes after that against the Houston, that's 25, 15, and 8. He's clearing this number when he plays 40 plus minutes. I'm just, there's no yeah. way they don't play 40 plus minutes in this game. I mean, unless it turns into an absolute blowout, which we I, I don't think it will. I think that's the only way that he doesn't, at minimum, him and Fox play at minimum 40 minutes here. So I think those are the two guys that I would consider for player props. Warriors side is a little difficult. Um, obviously, you do expect Curry to be out there and Draymond to be out there for most of the minutes, if you want to look at Draymond, like rebounds and assists to go over, I, I don't uh -huh. hate that. Steph Curry is going to do Steph Curry things. I know he's been a little bit, he's been struggling over the past couple of weeks or even a month or so, but I think when the lights shine the brightest, yeah, Steph man, Curry's gonna there's no, up. yeah, good luck if you're betting yeah. against Steph. Good yeah. luck if you're betting against Steph. I think Steph's taking over. Somebody says Steph PRA, Steph RA. Steph. I, yeah. Give me, give me all the uh, Steph props. Maybe I'm not, you know, on the RA. Just because I think that you know it's a lot of rebounds, I think going to be snatched up in this game. But he could do it. Like he's a really good rebounding guard. Give him Steph to get it done, and I think I think it's going to be off the points and assists. So, all right. Anything else for this game? No. All right. Let's get over to. Dang, our I just flew in the house. Pl oh, playoff I series know, between the. Oh fuck. Dallas Mavericks and the Golden School State Wars. Dallas Mavericks and the LA Clippers here. And I'll read off the uh, series prices here uh, between this four or five matchups. So currently, I mean, it's pretty much a pick on Clippers minus 110, Dallas Mavericks uh, minus 110 here as well. So the books are expecting this to be a, a very, very tight series, possibly going to seven games here. But just uh, quickly looking at what these two teams did against each other. Uh, during the regular season, um, the Clippers and the Mavericks here. Let me just pull this up. Uh, three games. The Clippers did take two out of the three against the uh, Mavericks. Uh, two and one straight up, two and one against the spread. And the under was uh -huh. two and one between these two teams as well. I know I don't I'm like putting a lot of stock into, you know, season matchups because again the playoffs turn into a different animal like we just talked about with the Warriors game that you expect the starters to be out there uh -huh. 35 40 plus minutes anyways but Terrell minus 110 both ways for these two teams the four or five matchup who do you like in this series and why man I mean it's I'm I'm fading the Clippers man I'm fading the Clippers and I'm taking Luca and the Mavs. I so my thing is, and why I always thought that this was a really tough matchup for the Clippers, and I'm curious on what the lineups were this season and who was in, who was out, and all of that. But my philosophy is just that I think that the pride and joy on defense for this Clippers team is Kawhi and Paul George. They guard the best two players on the opposite team, and they typically hold them really well because the two are very good defenders. They're not. They don't have shit on Luka and Kyrie. <laughs> I mean, they got James. I mean, Harden it's just that simple. It, it's just that simple. I don't think they have shit on Luka and Kyrie. Like, I really don't. And so now the Mavs did what everybody wanted them to do for so long. They got taller they got longer you know they they got that some wings and bigs gafford and pj washington like strutters just said it in the chat gafford is about to have a series i think i'm betting gafford over every game in the series 
Yeah. Every game in the series, I'm betting Gafford over. I'll probably do a parlay. It'll be Gafford over with Luca assists because if he gets over his points, about five of those, about five of those assists or field goals or whatever he has probably came from a Luca assist, more than likely. So I think that's going to be like a little, you know, two team, two player par- parlay. I'll have every game because I think those two are going to go together. I, I don't. Everybody's like the Mavs win game one. I seen Kaysen, the Mavs win game one. Yeah, Clippers win game one. That's what I'm on. That Clippers game one, Mavs win series. Take it back to when we had uh, a couple years ago when Luka was out and Jalen Brunson was running the Mavs team against Utah. Mm-hmm. They lost that first game and then they went and dominated the rest of the series. I think they swept the rest of the series after that when Luka came back. Clippers win a tightly contested first game. Mavs win the series. I'm on the Mavs for the series. Any way I can take the Mavs and take the Mavs in the series. Yeah, I think that, again, we're – I hate to say this, but we're always one play away from Kawhi or Paul George getting hurt, and this series just absolutely flipping the other way. Uh, but I think you mentioned that that the late that, that Luka and Kyrie are going to be a matchup nightmare for this Clippers team, and I don't expect Harden to be guarding either one of those guys. Uh, because if he does, he's going to be absolutely turned into barbecue chicken. Um, so that means just means that Paul George or Kawhi Leonard has going to—they're going to have to put in the effort on the defensive side of the uh, the the basketball um, to slow down Luca and to slow down Kyrie. And I don't think Kyrie's gotten his flowers now well that he has played this season uh, next to Luca because I know Luca has done Luca things, but uh, Kyrie has been absolutely phenomenal uh, playing with Luca in that backcourt. And like you mentioned, right, the front court depth that they added with PJ Washington, who can knock down that corner three point shot. Daniel Gafford is going to be the, I think very, very pivotal. If he's able to stay out of foul trouble for this Dallas Mavericks team and just give him that rim protection rebounding. I think that the, 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 the Mavericks do win this series here. So I do like the Mavericks. I'm going to go, I'm going to take the Mavericks in seven here. Uh, I think this series does get the seven games. Um, I know we'll talk about game one picks later, but I think there's an opportunity for, you know, the Clippers to come out in game one. I agree with what you said. I agree with what Kaysen said that they maybe get, they do get game one. And then after that, the Mavericks make their adjustments here, but the Mavericks have significantly improved also on the defensive side of the basketball. And I think that was one thing that, that uh, Jason Kidd has preached to this team year over year that if we're going to win ball games, it has to be on uh-huh. the defensive side of the basketball. And they did improve over the last five games. And I'll be there able to carry that into, um, you know, this series against the Clippers here. And again, the Clippers, it makes me nervous that again, health is always a concern, but also James uh-huh. Harden. I've seen him that he's had great playoff series. It's not this, but it's also times where he just kind of all just gives up and runs out of gas. Um, so I think that again, Luca and Kyrie might be just too much. But also, you talk about the depth of this Mavericks team, right? Maxi Kleba, Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh-huh. You mentioned PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford. So they have guys that can knock down that three point shot. So I say all that. Give me the Mavericks uh, in seven in this series against the um, the LA Clippers to advance to play the winner of the Thunder and the eight seed, whoever they might be. Any other? Um, Series bets you're looking at here, Tarot, whether it's like a series spread, whether it's total games. I know you mentioned the exact outcome about uh, Clippers win game one and Mavericks win the series. But anything else you're looking at? Yeah, I found I like that. I like, uh, you know, it's time to get fun. Buzzer beater in the series, 25 to 1. Luka oh, Doncic, yes. Kyrie Irving, shoot, Kawhi. Hell. Let's throw Paul George in there too. It's a lot of options, a lot of options for buzzer beater in the series. So 25 to one on that. Let's just start with the nice long shot play of that 25 to one. I like that. And uh, I'm waiting for the series for the series props to come out because Luca in 13 games against the Clippers, 33 and a half points, nine and a half assists, eight and a half rebounds, 33 in 13 career games. It's a lot yep. of sample size. It's a lot yep. of sample size. All right. DK. Um, DK Kaysen. Yeah. DK has those. Anything else for this uh, series? Uh, what else? I mean, I mean, let's talk about the total. Total series, total game. Five and a half is half. I mean, <laughs> you can't lay that. You can't lay yeah. that. Yeah. It's As, my, like you have to, you have to take it over. Like you have to say that it's going to go over that. Like, Minus one ninety five 
for over five and a half games, you're basically saying that this is going six, seven, like this is going at least six. Yeah. So then you you could at that point, maybe take like a correct score and take. So the favorite right now is Clippers in seven, which is plus three thirty. Mm-hmm. Dallas Mavericks in seven is six to one. And then you could really? take yeah, six to one on DK on if you go to the correct score under serious props. Mavericks is that in because, seven is six to one. Is that because it's gonna be in LA? Yeah, why game seven that? would be in LA. Why is but we saw what they did to Phoenix? In They're really seven. high on this. They actually think the Clippers are gonna win. Because why are why is of the top four bets and the se- total series? Yeah, yeah, it's all Clippers. It's Clippers four to three plus three thirty, Mavs four to two plus three sixty, Clippers four to one. The spread is five and a half. This one is not even saying it's going to get over that. Yeah. Five plus five fifty, Clippers four. Yeah, I like being on the opposite side. It seems like they're not they're not giving the Mavs enough credit here. Yeah, and then you go to series spread. Mavericks plus one and a half games is minus two forty. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, plus one and a half. What's minus plus one, one and a half? half? Yeah, plus one. Where and you half. see minus one and a half? What's that? Uh, for the Mavericks, plus one fifty five. Give me that. That's my play. Mavericks later one and a half on the series spread plus one fifty five. All right. Uh, anything else for this series? Yeah, because, hey, if it's a bad beat on that total, because ev- all those, every single one of the series that are out right now, the totals are, you're laying $2, basically. Yeah, every single yeah. one, you're laying $2. Really some, yeah. like, some of those are going under. And so, if the Mavs win, it, win cash the one and a half, plus 155, and let's just say that they're absolutely dominant and they just win all the close games and this ends in five, that was an easy cash, man. Yeah. give me, Just give me the maps, and I'll lay the series, I'll lay the series straight with the map. Mass minus one and a half plus 155. All right. All right. Let's get over to the three six matchup between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. Currently, as it stands, the let me get over to the series winner odds. This one's pretty close as well. They have the Phoenix Suns slightly favored minus 115 to win the series, Minnesota at minus 105. Uh, we'll talk about series spreads and things like that here in a second. But let me quickly recap what we saw between these two teams in the regular season here. So these two teams it matched wasn't good. up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it wasn't good for the Minnesota Timberwolves. We'll say that. Um, <laughs> three games this season. Suns won all three games. They covered the spread in all three games. I mean, it wasn't even close. All three games. For the Suns were double digit victories 133, 115, 97, 87, and then 125, 106 just last week. So, um, obviously, Minnesota does have the home court advantage in this game. Not sure if that really matters here, but Suns and Timberwolves here, Terrell, where are you going with this series? I really, I really don't want to trust the Suns, but I don't know how I can just. I mean, it's different basketball. It was rough all year, man. Anthony Edwards never got it going all year versus them. He was, you know, inconsistent, 4 for 16, stuff like that, 13 points, 15 points, like stuff like that. I really don't want to take this. I really don't want to take the Suns, man. It's really nerve wracking. It hasn't been good for them all year, but I, I just don't know how I can trust Minnesota to get this series done. Like, I just think it's too many options offensively. Like, it's too many options for Grayson Allen. Got off every single game. Had a good game. Recently you know, paid Grayson Allen four years, seventy million. He deserved it. Yeah. He was so consistent from three this year, man. Like, so consistent. And I'm gonna be playing his threes in this series as well. He hit four in every game. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Uh, let me see. It was four, three. He hit three this last one. He hit four the game before. And then I think he hit four at one in the beginning of the season as well. Three, four, three. All right. His line's at two and a half consistently. Yeah. It's consistently two and a half, laying a little bit of juice. 
I don't know, man. I don't think I, I, I really wanted to. I can only trust Anthony Edwards on that team. So it's either take the Suns or take Anthony Edwards. I, I don't think it's I think it's too much. So, yeah. I, I think it, it, I, I'm going with Phoenix here, man. I just again, you mentioned like the offensive disparity between these two teams. Uh, yeah, Anthony Edwards. I mean, he's a dog. I mean, what he's turning into one of the best two way players in the league. And the guy prides himself, especially on the defensive side of the basketballs. I mean, there's been some crazy defensive plays that he's made in the final seconds of a game that has secured his team victories. But the concern I have with the Minnesota Timberwolves is, is the depth, then. Like, who is going to be able to provide that scoring? Um, responsibility with anthony edwards because like you mentioned he struggled mightily this season against this uh phoenix suns team i mean he didn't bro if he breaks through their winning games if he breaks through that they are winning games i am so i'm so confident if he breaks through that they're winning games but i haven't seen him do it at all this season so but i'm not going to say that it's going to be easy i don't think the suns are going to run away with this but i think anthony edwards is going to figure it out like he's too good not to figure it out he's going to figure it out for a game maybe two games 13 17 and 13 like you mentioned but for him to figure it out for four games this series i don't trust it i I don't trust at all is a question then not at all yeah not at all. Especially he just came back. Was that was that his first game yesterday? Uh yesterday it was his first. Uh I think it was his uh, I think it was his second game back. Let me double check here. I think he back, came back on Friday against the Lakers. Yeah, Sorry, I against the Hawks crazy. he came back. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. came back so against two the games. Hawks. He's got yeah, two, two games, games under his belt. Yeah, especially going off a meniscus injury. That's like that's tough. But yeah, I'm all over Phoenix here. Uh, and then you're missing and then you're missing date cuz when is this when does this series start? This starts on Saturday. So now you're missing another week. Another week, no basketball. You just came back, played two games, and now you're missing another week, no basketball. Yeah. You're not getting yeah. it. You're not in game shape. You're not in game shape. I actually I actually think I will fake cat. I think I I think I would actually fake cat. I can't wait till they play they post the player props. I think I'm gonna take a series, a series fade to cat. The, I mean that again, that makes sense, especially for the amount of time that he missed and the type of injury that he did have. I mean, the first two ends up against a very small sample, 28 minutes, four, four for 11, one of six from three, 29 minutes, three of eight, one of four from three, 10, 11 points and 10 points, respectively, in those two games. Um, so if they, offense, he, he averaged 21.8 for the season. Yeah. If they put his line at 21.8 for or 21 and a half, 21 and a half, if they put his line at 21 and a half for the series. Do you think he's guaranteed 20 points every game? I don't even think he's guaranteed the minutes at that point either if he's going to be that bad, but I don't think he's guaranteed that. Again, three matches, okay, 25, 25, and 10, but again, those were games where he played heavy minutes in him, but it's, it's what you mentioned, right? He's probably still has that rust yeah. uh, on his shoulders and, and his and his he legs. He literally just and, came back. Yeah, two games. I don't think that's enough, especially coming off the injury that he typed, uh, the type of injury that he did. We compared that with the Sixers did with Joel Embiid, like that makes a lot more sense because he, he had came back what, like two weeks. He came yeah, back. Yeah, like so weeks he ago. has. Yeah, he has that. He should be up to more conditioning than. And then even Thomas when he came back, he looked good. Like, yeah. <laughs> like we can't imagine. Like we can't compare the fact that so he has what Joel Embiid has what five games under his belt, and he 24, 29, 30, 37, 32. Like he's looked yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I say all that. Phoenix is is going to be the play for me here. Minus one fifteen, um, I think minus one and a half as well on the series spread for the Phoenix Suns here. I think that gets it done. That's at plus one forty uh, for the Phoenix Suns to win by four games uh, to two at minimum. So um, okay. that's what I'm looking at. What else are you looking at? You have anything else for the series? Yeah, I like I like that play a lot. Uh, I think that over two, five think and a half four is to two, minus two four to two exact outcome feels pretty good here. I mean, I like yeah. the somebody said seven. Uh yeah, mm. Suns is seven. I, I think that's a good I think that's a good play too. Like I think this can be a I think this is gonna be a longer series. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't play around with the under on the total on the total games here. It's at five and a half minus two fifteen on the over. Like I'm not I'm not gonna take the juice on the under plus one seventy five and you know, just hope it goes under. Like, I really do think this is going to be a long series. Anthony Edwards is going to find a way to win a couple games, but 
yeah yeah i'm 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 with the give me an exact outcome of suns yeah four to two plus 320 that's the chalk oh that's the chalkiest one and i'll put a sun four to three i put a suns four to three in my back pocket as well all right um yeah correct score like you mentioned plus 320 suns and seven six to one as well so all they right, can't yeah. lose this, they can't lose this series right like what what hope do you have for the future of kd devin booker and bradley beal if you can't get out the first round yeah and i think there's gonna be a lot of conversation about what kevin durant's quote-unquote legacy would be if he is bouncing this first round against the minnesota timberwolves so um yeah, I I will be yeah, all over the Phoenix Suns here. You got anything else for the series? No. No, I think that's it. All right. So that is uh everything in the Western Conference up until the 1-8 matchup and the 2-7 matchup. So once we know those um those matchups, we'll do a series preview like we just did for those two series as well. So again, good time to be subscribed to the NBA Gambling Podcast. So Terrell uh, let's do our lock and dog for the play in tournament games and then a like a series lock uh for the either the Cavs, uh, sorry, for the Clippers and the Mavs and then the Timberwolves in the the Sun. So um you want to lead us off? Yeah, I'll do it. Lock. Whew, I'm tempted. It's either the Warriors or Sabonis, man. I think the way we handicapped that warrior, I mean the uh the Sabonis prop. Yeah, man. I, I don't know how solid. I can't play the I can't I don't think I don't know how I can't play the Sabonis prop. I really don't. So Sabonis, I'm just make sure I can't get a better line anywhere else real quick. Yeah, it's over 37 and a half points, rebounds, and assists at minus 113. We talked about it again. Look at what he's doing when he plays 40 plus minutes. He get he clears over this line. And then the time he didn't clear it in the past five games that we talked about, he hit it 37 and he got hooked. Everything else has been he's gotten over the line. Like he, if he's out there, he's gonna stat pad. Like he's gonna be involved in the game on offense. He's gonna be scoring. He's gonna be rebounding. He's gonna be getting assists. So I I don't really think that I and you also have the Draymond revenge game. I mean, if you want to throw that angle in there, I'm a whoo, hey. Remember Draymond stomped on you. Whoo, give him some buckets, like <laughs> <laughs> give him some buckets. Try to knock him out to play in, even though I don't think you guys are. Uh, Sabonis, I think Sabonis has a good game regardless, just just because of the usage and the minutes count alone. So Sabonis PRA over 37 and a half. I think his triple double is in play as well. Yep. And for my dog. I know these have been. Do I stay in the same game? Do I dare stay in the same game? I might. What's what alt lines can I get with the Warriors? Uh, let's see here. Because if they, because if it, I, it's really because I believe that the Kings are not going to take this loss easily, and if this is close and the Warriors have a lead short to go, then. The Kings are absolutely going to foul. Send me over the spread, that the alt spread, or it could even be the fact of <laughs> it could even be that this Warriors team just dominates this team. They've been playing pretty solid defense, man. Yeah. If if Sabonis and Fox are not going, not even Sabonis. If Fox is not going, because we've seen there and Fox have some rough games, and he kind of just not figure it out over the course of the game, and it's not that good. He's not efficient. This is going to get ugly pretty fast. I mean, for a dog, I don't like any. It's not big underdogs on the card. I'll just take a series spread on the team that I just think is going to win. So we'll go Warriors to get it done by eight or more. Mm -hmm. Warriors laying seven and a half plus 190. All right. There we go. Uh, And then you want to. All right. So let's do. I'll do my plan. Then we'll go to a series picks then just to keep it uh, consistent. So. Uh, all right, for my lock, um, man, I don't know this Lakers line. I I, I don't know what they say, pun it, but I really like the Warriors. I really do. Uh, that minus two and a half. Yeah, um, man. I think they get it done. So I'll take the Warriors here, minus the two and a half as my lock. Uh, for my 
dog then. Um, let's see here. They don't have a no, not a D. Um, Austin Reeves over two and a half three pointers made plus one fifty. I think all that attention is going to be on Anthony Davis and LeBron. And I think that Austin Reeves is a one guy that Darvin Ham does trust. And I think that does get the minutes as well. So I think there's an opportunity for, and I wish D was at three and a half at plus 130. I'm not really comfortable with that. But Austin Reeves, two and a half threes made plus 150 in that Lakers game as my dog. So uh, just to recap, lock for Terrell, you're taking the PRA over for Savonis, 37 and a half. My lock is going to be the Warriors minus two and a half for the play in tournament games. And then our dogs, uh, I am going with Austin Reeves over two and a half three pointers made at plus 150. And then Terrell is taking an alt spread on the Warriors minus seven and a half at plus 190. So those are the play in tournament picks. And then let's give out our uh, series uh, locks here. Uh, Terrell, uh, I'll let you lead it off. If you want to give like uh, one each for each series, or if you just want to give one, it's up to you. All right. I, I want to. I'm trying to think if I want to be spicy with Dallas, or do I just take the minus one eighteen call it a day? I, I just think that they're going to give them hell. I think they're going to give them hell. I make my lock Dallas minus one and a half at plus one fifty five. Going to do that. Yeah, in the other game, I don't. I don't know. The Suns really have pissed me off. The sun's really good. Piss me off, man. Is it as easy as just saying the sun's, man? Give me the sun's. Minus 118. All right. Uh, man, I wish they had like serious props up because I feel like Luca is going to absolutely rip Yo, right the just, Clippers ass. That's it. Just take Clip. <laughs> just take Luca, whatever, whatever it is. Just take Luca. Like, I can't wait that they post it. We got to come back to that. I'm going to yeah. make sure. When I see it, I'm um, gonna mention it again on the show. I'll I'll go, man. They they're really they're really cheating us on that over five and a half. I mean, I can't give out a minus one ninety five lock. Give me, yeah, Mavericks um, to win the series as at minus one ten, and then I'm gonna go Phoenix in uh, the Phoenix spread minus one and a half. Um, that number is at where to go here. Mm-hmm. Minus one half was like what plus one fifty five. I said, Phoenix, sorry, plus one forty. So I'll, I'll give that Phoenix. Oh. I think they get it done um, by at least two games. So if it's in five games or in six games, I just think Phoenix gets it done. Uh, so Phoenix minus one and a half, plus one forty, and I'll take the Mavericks minus one ten on the series price uh, to beat the Clippers. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. For this edition of the NBA Gambling Podcast, Western Conference play in tournament picks, and then we preview the Clippers, Mavericks, and the Suns, Wolves. And once we find out who the matchups are going to be uh, for the 1, 8, and 2, 7, we'll do that uh, later this week. And then tomorrow, Scott and I will come back. We'll do the Eastern Conference, just like we did today, the play in tournament games in the two series that are confirmed between the Cavs and the Magic, and then the Pacers and the Milwaukee Bucks. Terrell, anything else you want to mention, my man, before we get out of here? Man, oh, I, oh, the yeah. amount of money that I'm gonna have on the Sixers, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bet. I'm probably gonna bet the Sixers every game. More than likely, I'm probably gonna bet the Sixers every game. Even games I know they're gonna lose, I'm probably still gonna bet the Sixers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. Look, it, it's that time. It, it's it's the playoffs. It's the most exciting time, obviously, for NBA fans. So definitely looking forward to it. Starting with the play-in tournament games on Tuesday. So we're 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 gonna be about, about a day ahead with our our, our pods here, just to give enough shelf life to everybody to listen and then, and, you know, get their uh, picks down as well. And then we'll be live at least this week um, at the usual time. And then maybe next week we'll start doing some night pods. So again, be a great time to make sure you subscribe to the NBA gambling podcast, YouTube channel. Uh, you can make sure to follow Terrell on Twitter and on Instagram. That's at really rail underscore underscore. You can follow me on Twitter as well at sports nerd eight, two, four. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Me and Scott talking about the Eastern Conference. Till then, good luck with your bets here tonight. Let's break these books off and let it ride.